welcome to the podcast Beyond the Bite. I'm your host, Mo Hafiz, uh, CEO of Bitewise, where we are advancing AI education and helping professionals uh, learn about AI and learn how to use tools. And I'm here to break down tech in simple terms and explore how it's shaping our world. With every episode, we are looking to help increase knowledge, increase uh, awareness of these AI tools and how to use them and how to use them for good. What is AI? Um, it's a fantastic question to ask nowadays, considering how popular, for lack of a better word, that technology has become. Uh, AI obviously stands for artificial intelligence. Um, really defining artificial intelligence, you're, what you're basically saying is any uh, machine algorithm that can mimic mimic human intelligence. And that's the key, is that AI really only mimics human intelligence using algorithms. Um, AI is actually has been uh, around for a long time. We're talking uh, it, over two decades. Um, we've been using it in business. So we've been using it in tech. Uh, the only reason that why AI has now become so sexy and popular and why everybody's talking about it is because of the emergence of generative AI. Uh, yes, I'm talking about ChatGPT. Uh, once you know ChatGPT came out with the uh, form model and putting it in a text interface, uh, it blew up uh, overnight. And then all of a sudden, now everybody knows about AI. But only generative AI is really new. And actually, even generative AI is not that new. Um, if you think about it, we've been using generative AI for a while. We just didn't realize it, uh, many of us. Um, do you remember Hey Siri? Uh, or Hey Google, or any of these services where you essentially uh, were able to ask it a question and to respond, and you could tell it what's my, you know, what, what, how many emails do I have, and what's what news is going on today. That was all uh, generative AI. It has just been training in the background for a long time, and now it has gotten so good, uh, and that uh, you know, ChatGPT, uh, OpenAI uh, basically got ChatGPT to be so good that it became uh, a staple now in in everyday life and people are using it and it, it with it came a whole slew of funding. Um, but uh, but uh, AI, as far as um, automation, um, as far as creating algorithms that uh, essentially allow you to train a machine to do uh, a particular task, uh, that has been around for a long, long time. Well, the great thing about AI is as a virtual assistant, um, nowadays there is very little it cannot do. Um, we've seen uh, virtual assistants that you can talk to and have them take notes um, and have them uh, be able to even create pictures via doll, you know, tools like Dolly and Midjourney. Um, uh, now there's even um, AI tools that are creating video. Actually, you, you type a prompt and it gives you a, an actual video creation that the AI has created uh, with photorealistic uh, imagery, photorealistic uh, uh, video, even, uh, you know, and showing detail on, on human faces. Um, so there's a lot of different AI tools nowadays, a lot of generative AI tools, um, but also like, uh, you know, a lot of assistant tools that allow you to, um, that aid you in whatever task you're doing. Uh, you want to summarize a document? There's an AI assisted tool for that. It, allow, it it basically reads the the script of the document and is able to uh, give you feedback on that document. Um, the tools are many, and part of uh, educating the public is not just educating the public about what AI is and what it can do, but also educating about different tools. Um, and specifically, actually educating professionals and people in the industry about what new AI tools are going to help them in their uh, professions and in uh, and in their fields, whether it's health, whether it's uh, finance, uh, whether it's law, there are a myriad of AI tools nowadays, um, and uh, and they're coming out uh, more and more every day. Um, uh, some of the you know to give an example of one of those tools, one that recently just kind of started making the rounds because. Uh, it, it again uh, added a feature that made it quite popular uh, is Notebook LM, which is a Google product. It's been around for a while, um, but recently uh, Notebook LM um, uh, gave the option for people who uh, put any information in there, whether it's an article, whether it's a document of any kind, a text base, it can now take that and turn it into 
a podcast. I kid you not. It can turn it into a podcast with voices. You have actually two voices, a male and a female, and they're talking to each other in a very natural tone, podcast style. Um, and it, the, the tool has been around for a while, but uh, it's it's recent sort of, a, the reason it made the rounds in the news and and now it's getting adopted a lot more uh, and it's a Google product is because of this feature that all of a sudden made it, uh, you know, kind of get some attention that it really deserved earlier. Um, but it is essentially a, a text analysis tool uh, that Google came out with. And, and then this feature uh, made it quite uh, interesting to use. I mean, imagine summarizing uh, a document that somebody sent you in a podcast style that you can just listen to, and it points out all the main points of of the of the document or of, of whatever you fed it um, in a in an engaging and auditory format. Um, so there are many many AI tools, and as far as assistance AI assistants are concerned, um, there are a lot of different foundational models. Um, so everyone's familiar with OpenAI's ChatGPT. Uh, there's Google's Gemini. There is Anthropic's Claude. Um, uh, there is, uh, of course, uh, F- uh, Meta's uh, new uh, model, open source, is called Llama. These are all uh, models, uh, AI models, and they all are assistants, and they're pre-trained. Uh, in other words, when we talk about GPT, the, the GPT in chat GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. So some of these models, uh, that, well, actually, most of these, these models that I just mentioned, um, these tools are pre-trained on a whole lot of data. Uh, but you can actually uh, create your own uh, model that's not pre-trained, and you can train it on your own set of data and on your own uh, whatever tasks you're trying to automate. Uh, and then you can have your own working model that does what you want it to do. Uh, but uh, those that's kind of an overview of some of the, the various AI tools out there. And like I said, there's thousands upon thousands and more coming um, uh, that we can cover in across various fields. How does AI learn from data? That's a great question. As a matter of fact, it's a really important question because um, AI in, in today's era, in today's times, has fundamentally become uh, uh, very data dependent. So um, AI models in the past were, uh, they were uh, algorithms that were logic-based, symbolic-based. In other words, if then, you know, you would tell it, um, you you would feed it a set of criteria and say, this is how I want you to to, uh, give me a result. Uh, A classic example is training AI to play chess. You give it the rules and based on that, it, it, when when you do X, it does Y. Um, so uh, in that case, it was it was very much a, a, an if then algorithm, a logic based algorithm. Uh, current AI models, and when we're talking about you know things like Siri and and uh, and ChatGPT, uh, they rely on data because they actually take all of that data and they. Uh, do predictive analysis. That's actually how they come up with all of the stuff that they do. Natural language processing, for example, this idea that you can talk to AI, that is a whole bunch of data that was fed to that model over time. Uh, And you may have been feeding it that data, whether you realized it or not, um, because, for example, when you were typing in a Google search, uh, you were actually helping that model get better at predicting what question you're typing and what things you're asking of it. And this happened over years and years and years. Um, So that data was used to train the AI model on all of these different things. The internet itself is a huge source of public data that was used to train these models over a large period of time. For example, uh, ChatGPT didn't just use the internet, it also used YouTube. Um, they they trained AI on they trained their model the the uh, uh, the GPT four model on YouTube videos on public data on you know um, articles books even um, all of that data was used to essentially give the model its pre training that allowed it to be so good and able to answer so intelligently intelligently be, in quotes. Um, but uh, and and of course we are continuing to want to feed these models more and more data so that they can get better and better. One thing to note about the importance of data is there's an old adage of trash in, trash out. Um, so the idea being that if you feed it bad data, it's going to give you bad results, which makes sense. Um, but the importance of training it on good data. 
uh, is what allows it to be uh, accurate. It's what allows it to to make less mistakes and uh, uh, and potentially have less hallucinations. Although we haven't really, uh, you know, a lot of these models haven't really solved that hallucination problem yet. But uh, we often talk about how the importance of data because that's what the model is trained on. And I'll give one more example of how a model is trained on data. G G you know, ChatGPT is a general model. It does it's trained on a whole lot of data, which is why you can talk to it about law or finance or or healthcare or IT, and it can respond and help you there. But um, when you you can train a, a smaller model, fine tune a smaller model on a specific set of data only and have it not draw from anything else. So you can take a, a base model and a, a non-trained model and you can say, I want to train you on, for example, I'm, I'm going to give you data on uh, temperatures, uh, global temperatures, and so that you can track you know, climate change. And I'm going to give you data on ocean currents um, and only that data. And I want you to draw only from that data. Uh, and I want you to, you know, be able to answer me questions based on only that data. Or I feed you a document and say, based on only this document, I want you to be able to summarize what's in this document, et cetera, not pull from the larger internet. Uh, all that um, being said, uh, data for model training and model improvement is, is, is gold. That is what AI thrives on, and all of these uh, models that we're currently using are continuing to consume as much uh, data as possible from us as well. As we use ChatGPT, ChatGPT learns from us. That's all data as well. And that it, data is used to continually train and retrain the model and potentially help it improve. But also, as is the case with bad data, it could also make its results more unreliable. So AI is around to stay. Uh, there's, uh, you know, concern about, uh, you know, uh, how can we trust these models and how well do they perform? Of course, uh, we, you have to understand that they are prone to error, and even ChatGPT will tell you that. But that doesn't mean we can't use them. In fact, they have facilitated and already facilitating a lot of um, different things. And, and I'm talking about generative AI now. I'm not even talking about the AI that's behind the scenes, the ability to um, you know, uh, use data to then have the machine be able to algorithmically give you a predictive analysis on that data and 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 be able to give you insight onto that data. Whether you're a business who's looking to, uh, you know, make better decision making, uh, or you're a, um, a healthcare company that is researching a new drug, and you would like to be able to, uh, you know, rapidly and uh, more efficiently and more quickly be able to feed data to a machine that can crunch the numbers and be able to, to give you a, a better idea about what's working and what's not, and if there's any patterns. All of that AI behind the scenes is going to continue to be a part uh, of everyday living. Um, you know, uh, we use AI uh, in, when we're choosing uh, Netflix movies. So if you're ever browsing in Netflix, Netflix uses the the movies you've watched and loved and and to give you recommendations that you would uh, enjoy. And all of that, again, is AI working behind the scenes. As far as uh, generative models, they've you know uh, unlocked a whole level of, of uh, being able to do a lot of creative things uh, that once would require a lot of people. Again, you have to remember that these uh, models are not always um, going to give you accurate results right now, especially as they are continuing to improve, but it's quite, quite good. Um, and that's why experimenting with these models, using them uh, is is great. Um, and, and AI is fundamentally changing how we live in society today because it, we, you know, companies and developers are using AI more and more to facilitate a lot of things that, um, you know, were once, uh, you know, tasks that that required a lot of effort, uh, now have become much more automated. Uh, having virtual assistants, the fact that you can now have your own virtual assistant um, that can take notes and that can, uh, you know, book your calendars and um, and uh, can give you summaries. Uh, these are only going to uh, in, increase in use um, and we are going to uh, continue to, you know, use these models and they're going to continue to get better and better. Um, but AI is around to stay and we're uh, we're looking to uh, use it ethically and, and help use it ethically. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, you know, I, I look forward to sharing more insight about 
AI and about what it can do and some of the tools that we're using and it's also how it's changing our society. Uh, so please don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for more content and for more videos and more insights about uh, AI and other technology on Beyond the Bike.